So it is uh, it's Thursday, February 8th. It is uh, 11.30, and uh, things have gotten kind of quiet after some morning fireworks here. Um, <clears throat> we had, uh, I mean, obviously for everyone that was in here, we had arm going this morning, uh, pretty massive hits. I mean, uh, I took this off at... I took two two sections off, one at 50%, the other one at uh, 90, and you know those were kind of uh, those were kind of here <laughs> and here. I missed uh, a, a big big chunk of the move, but you know profits are profits, right? Um, that's the that's the important thing, and this thing's kind of consolidating. And if the market wants to cooperate, it might get a, an additional. Uh, an additional push, but uh, but things have to kind of have to cooperate. Uh, I'm over here. I'm watching the ticks here on the tick chart, um, and we had a couple of uh, you know minus 900, a high 900s down here, uh, and we're still kind of hanging around or this 600 to, to 900 level. Um, <clears throat> so things have uh, things have got to get popping if we're gonna if any of these names are gonna start to to work out. Yeah, if you're getting an echo, you probably have more than one uh, room open. Um, <clears throat> and yes, yes, you have two Nates. Um, Nate squared, Nate B, Nate G, whatever you want to, however you want to phrase that. Uh, two Nates and one D, man. Sounds like a, sounds like a TV show, doesn't it? <clears throat> what was that old TV show? Two Guys, a Girl in a Pizza Place or something like that? I'm probably dating myself, but... That's what uh, that that's what that reminds me of. <laughs> uh, so um, our arm trade was a great one, and then I put it in here in chat. And I don't know if uh, I don't know if you all uh, noticed today, but uh, uh, I'm struggling a little bit with uh, the numbers when I type them in. I'm trying. I was trying to type in a little bit more of a full. Uh, full trade and both times on both uh, Microsoft and um, uh, Nvidia, I I got the wrong number in um, in terms of my uh, the actual um, strike I was taking. So um, let's see. So on um, where is my? I must have already closed it. Hold on a second. My Nvidia, uh, we did a, a super lotto and. What that means, and if you if you saw me type it in, right, we uh, we popped up a little this morning, as you can see here. We popped up here, and then there was an immediate pullback to this red line that I had already had on my charts, and I bought there, and ran it up into VWAP and took it off for about for about fifty percent, right? Um, and so the question is. Uh, that you may have is why uh, why one was that red line on there and why was that a good level to buy off of and if we go out to a little bit larger chart right that red line was yesterday's breakout level and if we'll get into it a little bit I don't know exactly uh, what D-Man is uh, teaching later today but this is a volume profile a VP node uh, and so what was previous resistance, this red line here yesterday, as we came up, you know, we worked it here, we ended up touching it again, we tapped it again, and then we finally broke, right? So old resistance becomes what? Can anyone tell me? I can, Gary. Old resistance once it breaks becomes support right so as we got a quick wick down here in uh, nvidia i already had this line on my chart i knew exactly what it was uh, I, I bought there and then caught that quick bounce and the reason i called it a super lotto is because i went for this week's options and i went um, um, qu quite a ways out of the money I was looking for an immediate move, right? An immediate move, and so I think I I think I typed in the I, that I I bought the two seventies, which would be uh, a little bananas, and what I meant was 
the 720s. I was also trying to do another uh, another trade, so it happened pretty. I was typing it in really fast, and of course, I typed it in wrong. Um, and so we're out of the money there for this week, but I got a 50% move out of it quick, right? Uh, and then another one I've been playing is the uh, Microsoft here, off of this yellow line. So. It, does anybody see, let me get rid of sort of the confusing part. Let's get rid of that. Uh, so does anybody see on this, on this chart what that yellow line represents? Do you see, do you see anything similar? Yep, that's right, Kim. It was, it, it was a breakout resistance level to new highs yesterday, and now we're coming back and retesting that. And so, and that's the exact same as um, NVIDIA. Actually, it wasn't to new highs, but it, this was a key level. We had come up here once, we'd rejected that area, we'd come up here again, we tested it again, right? And then we had broken. And so technically not all-time highs because of here, um, but we had broken out and we're coming back and retesting. So when we break out of a pattern and we move up and we come back, we can retest that level. So what was support, what was resistance becomes support and look for a continued move up, right? Or another thing that happens is we get a failed breakout and then it reclaims the pattern, right? Which it did, which it did here in this time. We had a failed breakout and it reclaimed the pattern and came all the way down into support of this pattern. And the reason I know that the, there's support in this pattern down here is because of volume profile, which I can talk about here in a little bit. So two of very the, 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 same, the same trades and we're just trying to get a little, little pop, right? We got a little bit, bit of a pop in that a little bit earlier. Let's see here. Um, and now it's come back in and test it. So this is, this is a, a one minute chart off of that level. But you see how it's acted as support now here, and it's doing it again with a little bit of a breakdown, uh, but it's it's reclaiming again. So, but the market's going to need to cooperate, right? If the market doesn't cooperate, um, but it looks like it looks like we're getting a little bit of a, a push up off of uh, off of VWAP after breaking that new high here on the queues. And for those of you who don't know, we use the queues and the SPY. Um, as a gauge uh, of how the market's doing um, and along with uh, our ticks, you know, right? Our tick chart, which is over here. I also have this, right? So if I have the cues up, I also have this up on another window. You can see this here. And we have the ticks, which is real time buying and selling in the market uh, and the VIX and the ADD. Um, and just being able to glance at that you know, kind of helps us get a get a quick quick gauge on what's happening in the market. Yeah, if you're if you're uh, feeling like you don't get sound, if you're if things are muted, you can click on that sound section on the lower left hand corner. I know you can't hear me, but I'm flashing the green the green box <laughs> there we go thanks mods flashing the green box uh tina yeah the the microsoft and the nvidia trades were essentially the same um we're taking it off a previous breakout level um, on a on an intraday chart, uh, what was resistance yesterday into those breakout levels is now support, and so I'm playing it off that support level there. Hi Art, <clears throat> this program here is called Trading View. Um, and then I use Thinkorswim uh, for actual trades.
Let me try and catch up here on chat now that we've... Uh, oh, and then the other one I put on, and then I'll catch up on chat, is UNP here. Um, <clears throat> UNP is, is uh, uh, obviously in an uptrend. Uh, Nate will probably talk, Nate Bear will probably talk about um, the TPS method. You all probably know the TPS method, right? We're looking for a trend that is moving up, right? Um, in this case, it's not necessarily a TPS trade, but on this 30 minute, we are pulling back into uh, a VP level. Remember, this is a support level. You can see uh, we had, we've come into this level here at least once. It's bounced off that level another time. And I'm just playing a bounce off of that level back in to follow the trend. Um, and so that one, um, <clears throat> let me see. Let me say it right because I said my strikes incorrectly on the last go round. Uh, those are for next week, 216s, and they are the 247.50 calls. Uh, uh, Pedri's, uh, no, I mean, you do here in chat, yeah, in, in DPL, you ask, you're asking, do I receive updates for all the trades from different traders? Uh, Nate Bear is the only one who puts his trades um, in the trades tab. Um, we put ours in chat and or um, on the mic if we're on the mic. And then we obviously uh, review them when we do come on. Here's here's what I'm in today. Here's what my thought process was. Uh, here's how we we mark those things up, right? Um, but but the one that you get uh, uh, trade alerts for um, are is just Nate Bear because those are the official recommendations. Yeah, uh, Kim, I bought the t uh, February 16s, 247.50s. Right, and the nice thing about being in a room like DPL is that, you know, it's not only Nate Bear and uh, myself and Demon that are putting in uh, trades, it's uh, uh, other people come in with ideas. Um, and that's the funny thing is, you, you know, it, when you're in a room like that and you're learning to fish for yourself, uh, so to speak, you, um, people can put in ideas and you can immediately flip over to it and go, someone says, oh, okay, I like Microsoft. And then you look over and you go, oh yeah, I like Microsoft as well, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Um, but I like the idea or, um, the, the chart fits my eye. So, uh, I'm going to create my own plan, my own trade plan based on that. Um, and people are always firing in ideas. There's other times people put in ideas, uh, and it's like, no, I do not like that idea. Uh, but you know, they, it might work out great for them and it just, just doesn't set up for, for my eye. I love this Netflix chart. Love this Netflix chart. So I thought we could uh, kind of look at a few charts. And um, since it's kind of the middle of the day, there's probably not uh, a lot of um, actual trades to be done. Um, but uh, hold on just one second, please. Sorry about that. Um, had to mute there for a second. Uh, so I thought we could go through and uh, look at some charts and maybe set up some trade plans. And um, and if they come into our levels, then um, we can we can set up a buy. Or if you like that particular trade plan, maybe tomorrow or the next day it comes into the level we're looking for, uh, and you can make your own trade because that's kind of that, that's kind of the point of what we do here is um, we come on, we do a lot of teaching, we create, help create trade plans. Uh, we, you know, when Nate was on here a minute ago, he was talking about uh, psychology, right? We talk about risk reward, uh, risk parameters. And so uh, the idea is to create a bunch of ideas uh, so that you can execute some of these on your own, right? <coughs> um, so, 
uh, this Netflix uh, chart looks amazing, right? Um, there's a, a nice VP level here that's acting as support. There's another VP level, and that's at 555.44. Um, and there's another VP level coming up here at 565, roughly. Um, you know, we've got what kind of appears to be a bit of a, uh, a pennant or a, a triangle forming here. And um, this is going to be, I mean, I know Nate Bear loves Netflix right now, loves this chart, uh, earnings winner. And um, what I'm expecting this to do is come up into this red level here, consolidate a little bit, maybe even give us a pullback and then maybe a move higher. Uh, because what's happening is this trend line and this volume profile point of control level are coming in together, right? So to set up a trade on this, I would like Netflix lower, right? So I would like Netflix down in kind of this <clears throat> 557 area. So I'm going to add an alert there. If it comes into that level, and then I'm going to use my, you know, long position box to say, okay, if we can, if we can get a little bit of a pullback, I'm going to play uh, a nice risk reward up into that high there. And this is a box that's on trading view. So I can look at this really quickly. I have a risk reward of six fifty seven, you know, six, six to one, six and a half to one. Um, if I honor my stop below that level, right? So I, I know that this is a this is a good trade if I if I take it and I get a pullback to a level that I want, um, and I would at least like a pullback to this level. So I'm going to put a little green line in there as my my potential buy. And because we're playing a 78 minute chart squeeze, right? Do we have a 130 on this? We do have a 130 on this. So let's say we're playing our 130. Actually, we got a pretty good entry, I think, this morning, didn't we? I didn't get in it, but we're playing this 130 minute chart. Right? So since we're playing a 130, I'm going to look at the um, in Netflix. Sorry, let me pull this up. I'm going to look at. Why can't I detach? Sorry, one moment. Trying to detach my option chain here. There we go. Here's my thinkorswim option chain. This is for Netflix. I'm playing a 130 minute chart. And so I'm gonna go out to, I'm gonna go out to the 565s. Maybe even these are expensive, 562.50s. Okay, this is uh, seven dollars and seventy cents, so you can get this for about seven eighty per contract. Um, but to do that, I want to make sure our risk reward is good, so I'm going to try and take it somewhere off between five fifty eight and five fifty five. All right, so that that's that's a trade plan for Netflix that if you like that trade plan, you can execute on your own, right? My stop would be below the 555.44 level, right? Anything below that on the 130 minute chart, which means that's not a stop out and that's not a stop out, right? It's just a wick below that level. What is a stop out would be a candle that closes below that level, right? And then you'd have another candle here, let's say. That would be a stop out for me on a 130 minute chart. And then we'll wait to see if we can get a good entry. Right, so we'll set that one up. What are the volume profile settings you're using? This is uh, this is called VRVP on the left. We use this uh, to help us 
uh, understand where other traders are and to get uh, support and resistance levels. And my settings are, I'll put them up on the screen if you want to take a, a screenshot. The input settings are that, 150. Right, that gets the smaller, uh, more detailed volume profile there on the left. And then for style, I, I turn off, I make all of these the same, volume up, volume down, value area up, value area down. I make them all the same um, uh, opacity level. <clears throat> and then I turn off value area high, value area low, POC, because I do those myself when I draw these in. Uh, Panna, no, it doesn't really matter. I mean, in this case, we're playing the 130 because we're looking for, you know, or I was trying to play the, the squeeze that's the furthest, you know, the largest time frame. We have a nice squeeze, we, right? We have some rounding momentum to the upside. Um, the pattern looks good here. Um, but generally what I'll do is I'll set up a trade like this, right, uh, on the 130. But then when I'm waiting for the right time to, to enter, I'm waiting for my entry, you know, I'm watching this on a five minute. But you see, once you mark up your chart, when, now that I've marked up my chart, I know my levels, right? They're, pre they're pretty easy to spot. And so I'm looking for this to work its way down into this area here, that's, right? where I'd like to take an entry. I'd love to take an entry right down here because then my risk reward is my stop is really tight. And so if it goes up, we're, we're, we're profitable almost immediately. And if it goes down, I'm quick stop, very, very small loss. Right, that's controlling your risk reward. Oh, the volume profile on the left side of the chart, that's pretty easy. Come in here to inputs and oh here sorry under style left placement left or right it does start on the right and I prefer visually I look like it on the left you don't know anyone that uses a 12-hour chart <laughs> that would be weird Did somebody put 12 hour in there? So, uh, Sean, the weird time frames that I have in here um, are 65, 78, 130, and 195. Those are the weird ones, right? So, a daily chart, here's a daily, right? A daily chart is one candle per day. It, right, the, the uh, trading day is six and a half hours, right? And so if you do just an hourly, your last, right, you're gonna get six hourly candles and one half hour candle, right, which rolls into the next day. So to prevent that, I've created 65 minute candles, right, which give you six, five, four, no, am I, did, did I do that right? 195 is two, sorry. Two, three, four, and five. So let me rewrite that. I did that backwards. So 195 is two candles, right? 130 is three candles and so on. And they're, and they're perfect uh, minute candles for a day. Does that, does that help make some sense? And the way you put those in there is you can open this. Anything you want up here, you star. So that keeps it up there. And then if you need to create these extra ones, you come down here, right? And you and you just type in, oh, that 78 and then minutes and then add it and then start. And then 130 and then add it and then start. That's how you do that. Uh, I personally do them manually, uh, Mark, unless I'm leaving the, uh, unless I'm leaving, you know, the office and I need to just make sure that uh, I'm protected because I won't be able to manage them for where, wherever I am.
Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on chat. Uh, TC2000, ask Nate and or D-Man on that one. Um, Toss does have volume profile, but it's called volume profile, and it's not as good. It's not as dynamic. This is visible range volume profile, right? And that is much more dynamic. And I'm happy to share um, I'm happy to share this uh, trading view chart setup if you want that. Yes, you can place stops on a trade in, in thinkorswim. Oh yes, DJ, yes. Uh, trading view is by far, in my opinion, the best charting platform along with TC2000, but TC, TC2000 is PC only. And I'm not on a PC. Uh, but TradingView is fantastic. And then um, a chart in TradingView and I trade in uh, Thinkorswim. Uh, okay, so let's do let's copy. This is a TradingView setup. TB setup oh, for TPS. There you go. Separate windows. I run them on separate windows, Mark. Or separate monitors. The custodians for TradingView? I do not know. So on the risk reward analysis, it's uh, basically the fourth one down here. It's just called long position. And you just put it on your chart and move your stop and move your target and it'll give you your risk reward there and you can leave it on during your trade yeah and trading view can be used across uh, a lot of different um whoops a lot of different um applications you can grab it on your phone uh big west i have a mac studio Uh, Bioni Mink, did I say that right? I, I'm sorry if I slaughtered that. Um, yes, it's recorded and both D-Man and myself put those up on, on, um, YouTube and no, I did not say that right. <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. Uh, I tried my best. Um, we put those up on YouTube and, um, and then Nate Bear also puts his in, uh, his, his are here in the uh, video section, but down below, if you scroll below the uh, screen. I do apologize for slaughtering that if I, if I did slaughter that, which it sounds like I did. Yeah, Steve, it's just added to the list of things I, uh, I did, right? Um, Manchi, I did not, Disney is not one of my trades, so I, uh, I do not know. Brandon, that's a great question. Um, the question is, how do you decide whether to add more to a position when it's down or cut it and run? And I can tell you, I'll, I'll use this Netflix chart. Okay, let's say I'm in Netflix, right? Let's say I'm in Netflix and my stop on my trade plan is this level here because the chart breaks down and my target is this level here. How I decide is if this is coming down into my support level, into my stop level, and I'm not fully sized yet, I will add, right? Because the closer I can get to my uh, support level, my, my, um, my stop out level, the better my risk reward is, right? My RR to add down here and get full position down here, right? And only I know, and only you know what your full position is. If it's below my stop out level, I do not add. If it's that, if it's below the stop out level and it has closed, that candle has closed on a closing basis of the chart that I'm playing, so 130 minute, candle closes below that, I cut it. 
I don't add. Right? So the answer to your question is, uh, if, if you're following your trade plan, then you should know where a good ad is and where a spot to not add and cut it is. But you have to have a trade plan first. That's trade plan is everything, right? And you need to learn to honor your trade plan because that's the psychology, right? And then if you're stopping out of too many trades and or too many trades or losers, then you can reevaluate your plan, right? And you can reevaluate. Wow. If I could write, that'd be awesome. Plan, or you can reevaluate your edge. What edge you're playing, right? But my advice to any trader, right, is learn to follow your plan. Set a plan before you press the buy, press the buy button, right? We just did that on Netflix. I'll do it on a couple more trade uh, setups that I like, right? And then follow your plan. And it follow your plan to the T. And then if you're if you're stopping out of too many trades or losing too many trades, then evaluate your plan or your edge. But the psychology of learning to follow your plan and cutting something when it's when it's dead or not working will serve you far better than trying to add and then hoping and then adding and then hoping and then watching the trade just go to zero which we've all done, right? Every trader has to figure that out for themselves. So it's better to, in my opinion, add, you know, evaluate those other two things and learn to cut a, cut a trade as soon as it doesn't work according to your plan and take your profits as soon as it hits the mark that you set for your profits. Yeah, one more time on the risk reward. So if I'm if I'm taking a trade here in Netflix and I want to know my risk reward, I'm going to come over here to the left hand side. I'm going to pick this fourth one down. If you click the little arrow, it's called long position. I'm going to click right where my entry is. So in this case, if I took it right now, I'm going to click right there and it just gives me a standard box. So this is where having a trade plan comes in. I'm going to move the red part to my stop. And then I'm going to move the green part to my target. So my target is a, is a test of this high. My stop is uh, anything below this level. And now I can see on here that I am, uh, this is about, well, it's not about, it's a 3.5 to 1 risk reward, right? I'm risking $5.31 to make $18 in the underlying, right? So the options would be would be different. But in the underlying stock, I'm risking 531 to make 1872. And it's a three and a half to one. And so that's a good RR. There there is no there is no um, long position um, there is no long position short position uh, functionality in trading view, unfortunately. Uh, okay, I've showed how to do that now five or six times. Um, it's just over here in long position, fourth one down, arrow, long position. All right, put it on your chart. I pick the upper target levels. We'll do another trade here. I'll show you. I pick the upper target levels by support and resistance. Right, support and resistance and volume profile here. Okay, so let's look, let's look at another chart and we'll do it from scratch. Uh, I wrote some of these down so that we can take a look at them. Uh, let me check. Let me do a quick check of my my positions uh, just to make sure nothing's going against me as I'm as I'm teaching here. Things look good. Things look good. I'm also in cat. Cat's another one of my positions here. Came into this point of control. Did anybody uh, did anybody put uh, add to their cat? Is anybody else in cat? This was a great spot to add right here off this point of control. I had said two days ago that I wanted it off of this level here.
You want me to present in Thinkorswim? Um, I can show you how I scan in Thinkorswim, but, but most of the time I jump back and forth. So if you're in DPL, right, the DPL will tell you um, that I jump back and forth between Thinkorswim and TradingView. But TradingView, this is a much easier way to, for, for me to show trades. Jack, you put a, a, a credit spread on here? Awesome. Great job. I love that. I love that trade. Love that. This is a great level in cat. This 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 chart on cat is a beauty. It's a beauty. So this whoops. So this is a great level, right? We're we're playing a what's now a, a 30 minute squeeze. For a while it was a 15 minute squeeze. Uh, we're playing this 30 minute squeeze after an earnings pop, right? This kind of gives us our our pattern, you know, our pop up, our pullback, our beak, right? Our woodpecker beak and our trend. Um, and this one's kind of nice because it's got a nice flat top here, right? This is a flat top woodpecker pattern. It's right into point of control level right now, right? So this is a, this is a great, this is a great uh, trade setup. Let's mark, let's mark this one up real quick. Okay. I'm already in this, so uh, just for so everyone knows, this is not would not be a new trade for me. Um, but I'm going to come down here to this low. I'm going to put a um, yellow line there. I'm going to put a red line here at point of control. So if I move that up, you can see this volume profile, right? This big volume profile node right here that's a point of control right over that we're bullish under that we're going to probably test a support uh, support level and come back or we're going to break down so that's where most of the traders are in this in this section right so i'm going to bring that point of control back in that's my point of control right We'll make the yellow area my stop and then we'll just do a test of the high right test of that more recent high so if we bring our long position in and we're going to take one right here off of the point of control and we move our stop up to our support level and we move our target up here to a test of the high right that is nearly a six to one risk reward Okay, we're playing a 30 minute. So I would come, I can tell you which ones, I'm in this week's, which is which I actually need to work a little sooner, right? Um, for cat on that 30 minute chart, I would come out here and I would, I would play the either the 320s or the 325s. You're getting a 42 delta here on the 325s and a 58 delta on the 320s. So that's kind of playing at at and around the money. I would play either one of these two for a move up. I'm in this week, so I need him to I need him to go right very very soon. And I might swap them out. So if I were looking at this, I might say I like the February 16th. I'm buying the 325s out February 16th. You could even go a little bit further out if you wanted. Uh, further, when in doubt, go further out, right? I would <coughs> stop below this level here at the th basically 320, um, and my target would be up here. So what am I what am I risking there on the underlying stock? Basically two bucks to make twelve, roughly. So I like this trade a lot, especially off of this level here. So there's uh, another trade that's uh, that's a good one. 
We have our we had Netflix that we marked up. We have Cat that we've now marked up as a potential trade. In fact, I might like to put this up. Hold on, I am going to I'm going to buy the 325s. in cat for next week. All right. There we go. There's a live there's a live trade. Live trade in cat. Yeah, if you can't read the chart here, This line, stop out line is at 320. Okay. I am taking it off point of control at 321.69. And I'm targeting the high of 334.81. This really gets going if it can get above this value area high right here. Because you can see above this, there's not a lot of VP to slow it down. I do not mind at all, Mr. Bear. Come on in. The water's warm. Okay, so there's a there's a live trade. The key, the key is. The key for this is, for me, I, I urge you all to make up your own trade plan, but uh, as we break down below this level, um, that's a stop out for me. And, and, and you know, it's all depending on risk parameters. The next level that it could bounce off of is this VP down here and kind of it's, it's, it's wick down on its on its earnings pullback after its after its gap up but for me that kind of a pullback turns my risk reward into a two to one and i i i just don't like that as much so for me that 320 is my level uh no i don't uh, DJ, because I, I want to make sure that one, it, it's on a closing basis. So what you'll see, like, for instance, if we're looking at this, um, <clears throat> let's see here. If we're looking at this chart, you see this candle here. I'll try and circle it, right? This candle here with this huge wick up and this huge wick down. If I had a stop already in that trade, which I wouldn't because that's that would be too early in the trade. If I had a hard stop in, that would have wicked me out right there. Right? But it didn't close on a closing basis below that. Right? So what I need to see is something like this where a candle closes below my stop level, then I'm out on the chart that I'm playing. So, you know, if I'm playing on this one, are we playing a 60 for now? I think we're playing the 30. So I would need a 30 minute candle to close below that. Actually, no. We're... I mean, this this 70, 65, yeah. I like this a little better on a 65. We're only in a three or four dot squeeze, but Um, no, it doesn't necessarily represent a, a hedge fund. It's just, it's just what happened within that hour, right? There was a lot of movement within that hour, right? So if we come out to, we just change this to a five minute chart, right? You can see this is right here. This is what created that candle. Right. And that's the start of a day. There's there's some this was earnings. Right. And this was the next morning with a with a little push up. We had to push up the next morning. We had to push up this morning. 
right? And so that's what happened within that one hour. Okay, do you guys want to mark up one more before my before my time's up? Create another trade? Or would you like me to answer questions? I'm happy to do either one. One more? All right, let's see. Um, let's see, I was looking at PSX earlier on what, 30 minute I think? No, maybe more like a 65. No, I don't like that one as much anymore. Um, another one we, we've all been um, playing is uh, ANF. So yesterday ANF came in to, did anybody that's in DPL pick up ANF? Right, we played, we played Abercrombie through here and then picked some up and played this. And then yesterday we got right back into that support level. So you see how on trades like this, you can pick things up off of support levels multiple times as they work their way up. But the key is understanding where that support level is before it's a support level. So that yellow line has been in there. That, that yellow line literally has been in there from right here. This is what the chart looked like prior. So that yellow line has been in there because we used volume profile to create it, right? We were trading this 30 minute pattern here, which started to work itself out. This was our stop level. So it's been in there, right? This is the, 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 the power of marking up your charts ahead of time. So then as this thing goes, some people were taking off profits into that test of the high, right? You see this previous test of the high so that was great. People made profits. And then we got a pullback. So we're just watching it. What happens? Oh, look at that. We had another buying opportunity two days ago, right? And then as we go, look at that. It comes up to our target number two. So we had another buying opportunity and another profit uh, opportunity, right? And now what's happening again? Wow, that really pushed up. Now it is, we just got a profit opportunity again, right? Or a, a buy opportunity and a profit opportunity. So you see, you see how these, I mean, if you held to they're great, but you know, we're just playing, we're, we're buying off support. You hear D-Man say this all the time. And, you know, it sounds like it gets repetitive, but until you understand it, then th then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, it makes sense. We're buying off support that we've predetermined and we're selling into resistance that we've predetermined and then we're doing it again. And then we're doing it again. And sometimes it just keeps going and you leave a trailer on for, you know, four or 500%. Rob, you know what these levels are by learning volume profile, right? You can look at charts to see those levels and then volume profile, that's this stuff over here, helps inform those levels. And being in a room like DPL, we come in here and we mark up charts like this all the time. And then knowing where these levels are, right? It, it's not always gonna hold a level like this, right? Sometimes that level breaks down. But if you're taking a stab here, and you're stopping out below that, your risk reward is very good, right? Quick stop here if it breaks, big profit here if it, if it bounces and moves. Does that make sense? Volume profile in TOS is not as good. That's why I don't, that's why I don't do that in TOS. I do all my charting in TradingView. But there's a great example of buying off support, selling into resistance, 
on a chart that we've pre-marked. So let's pre-mark another, let's pre-mark a chart up while I still have a few minutes here. I have about eight minutes. Uh, and then we'll break for lunch. Uh, and then Nate Bear will be back on at one o'clock. So let's see, I, NF was one, uh, what, let me, let me scan here real quick. Let me find a chart that we can mark up. I wanna make sure it's a TPS style chart. All right, we just did cat. So, um, here I can, I'll do this. You can watch me do this. So here, here's how I scan. This is a, th a thinkorswim window. I'm watching this chart because I love a 30 minute and a 78 minute. I'm looking at those two charts to see if there's a pattern that I like. Okay, and I'm gonna start flipping through names. You're not gonna be able to see what the names are, but you can see whether you know it's something that fits the eye. Uh, don't like it. Um, it's okay, but it's not the pattern I'm looking for. ADP is nice. I like it, but it's a little long in the tooth in terms of uh, how long it's taking. So I'm going to move on. ANF, we just talked about that. I like that chart a lot. AXSM, this 30 minute on AXSM is kind of interesting. I'm already in that in a put credit spread, so I'm going to leave that one alone. Let's find something to mark up here. Sorry, I'm gonna move through this quickly. Once you do this enough, this becomes, you know, almost second nature. Um, but if it's your first time, then um, this one's kind of interesting. GEHC, I, I actually wrote that one down, so we might come back to that one here. HSY took off today, didn't it? Uh, let's see. Let's find a good chart. If anybody has a has a good chart, please feel free to throw that in chat. Because uh, I'm really trying to to jump off here at uh, 12:30. Uh, Rob, yes, there are videos to help you build these charts. Uh, Nate has a bunch. I have a bunch on YouTube as well, which I can share here as I as I wrap up. I think I can share that link. I mean, PSX, oh, SRPT. Oh, I don't like the daily on that one. Uh, yeah, I can share my chart settings. Um, hold on, let me just find something that we can mark up here. And I can show you how we do this. Let's see, you, you like a AMAT? Let's see if I like AMAT. Things are kind of quiet right now. I mean, AMAT's about to, there's not a trade set up there for me. So let me, let me keep going here. Uber, yeah, Uber's running though. I'm looking for something we can buy. Okay, let's mark up PSX, right? This will just give you an idea. I'll explain why I don't, I don't love PSX here in a second. Okay, so we're gonna look at PSX. Uh, let's look at it on the P, oh, <laughs> SPX, PSX. God, sometimes I, when I type, I'm, I'll type a little on the dyslexic side. So <clears throat> let's look at a 78 minute. Obviously we're in an uptrend, right? Let's mark up this 78 minute. Okay, the one reason I don't love this chart, can anyone tell me why I might not like this chart very much? From a TPS perspective, we have trend, right? We have squeeze. We kind of have a pattern. The only issue is, right, we've, we've got a potential head and shoulders. This has to kind of come up a little bit more, but you know, what does it, how does a head and shoulders usually uh, resolve itself to the downside, right? So, but this will show you how to mark up charts and figure out support and resistance. So here's our point of control with the red line. And then I'm going to come down here. This is kind of our value area low. 
right? This is another reason I, I don't I don't like this chart as much. And then we'll come up here, we'll kind of create our value area high. Right? And the and the way I did that was looking at this volume profile node, and I'm finding kind of the bottom of that, right? And that kind of lines up here with this support, this sort of support level there. Right, my value area high is up here. That kind of lines up with this level. We've broken it and come back in there, but we're coming back into our point of control, right? So that's how I have support and resistance, okay? But we're kind of in the middle of support and resistance. So if I'm playing this for a touch of the high, let's put a green line in up here, right? And I buy it right now, off of point of control, that gives us not a great risk reward. One, you know, 1 1.2 to one. So I don't really love that. Uh, but the point was, there's not a good setup really that I that I love at the moment. But now I have this chart marked up, right? So if this Right, we came up, we pierced our high, we came back in to point of control, right? We pierced up, we reclaimed the pattern, we got back into our point of control. Now we're just hovering around our point of control. Maybe this thing comes down a little bit and creates a better buying opportunity within this pattern and starts doing what ANF does, right? Buy off support, sell into resistance levels, right? Maybe it gives us another opportunity later, buy off support, sell into resistance levels. That's that's what we do. And then sometimes you leave a trailer on for more. But you can take a trade like this, a TPS trade, and trade it four or five times before it goes or before it breaks down, right? And that's pretty much what we do. This is VRVP, this is volume profile. How do you take the 500 off for today? I do not know. Uh, if, if that's a, a trade you made, you just exit the trade. Nate's making a spy lotto call. Love that. So this isn't this isn't the best this isn't the best spot right now, but I like this. I mean, look at this weekly. Right? You feel like that's in an uptrend? I sure do. So I'd like to buy that, but it's just not, it's not in a spot where I'm, I'm ready to take that risk. So I'm going to, I'm going to mark it up. I'm going to put an alert on my chart and we're going to see if it comes in there. And if it does, I like PSX for a buy. So for those of you asking that were, I think the prompt works in here. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. For those that were asking um, where you can find these lessons, you can find them there um, on that YouTube. Um, there's tons of lessons on how to set, set up your charts in TradingView, how to set up your charts in Thinkorswim, how to set support and resistance levels, uh, how to read breakouts. There's a, there's a ton of information in there. And, uh, and, and again, we do this all day. Uh, every day in DPL. Now, there's not someone on the mic all the time, but all three of us are on the mic at least once a day for the most part. Um, and we come in and we talk about these sorts of things and set up trade plans and announce trades and um, we have a good time. So um, I'll be on a little later uh, again with everybody else when we do the, the Three Amigos session at the end. Um, and I'll be in chat all day. If anybody has any other, any other questions, uh, please feel free to feel free to hit me up and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Um, but uh, it was uh, nice hanging with you this afternoon and I hope to chat with uh, all of you in DPL in the coming weeks. Nate, are you ready to, to, grab, the, to grab the screen? I'll just kick it over to you. It's, we've got a half an hour here for, uh, for lunch. So it's a long day. Nate's on, D-Man's on again, and then all three of us are on later. 
So make sure you're taking your breaks. There's not a lot going on in the market right now. Uh, make sure to go get something to eat, get some water, take a little bit of a walk, stretch your legs, and he'll be back on here at, at one. All right, take care, everyone.